Hello everybody. Welcome to Thursday, April the 16th. I want to start by wishing my niece a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Kayla. I know every once in a while you stop over here on Auntie's YouTube channel and you watch my video. So I just want to say happy birthday. And I miss you guys so much. I hope your birthday is fantastic. And I love you. Today we are doing the uh, six inch Lone, Lone Pine Tree block. Yes, we are. It's actually going to finish at six and a half by six and a half, but in your quilts, it'll finish as a six inch quilt block. Let me get this video pulled up so that we can hopefully follow along in the live chat. <clears throat> Hello everybody. Thank you Miss Chantel for moderating my video today. Thank you so much. Hello everybody. It's so great to see you. So I'm going to give you a minute. I have all of the pieces up here on the screen for the block for today in case you missed it yesterday and you want to sew with me live. These are the pieces. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. I hope that it is a happy distraction. Still feels like Groundhog's Day, y'all. Harlan is having a hard time keeping track of which day it is. <laughs> I live by my planner, so I know exactly what day it is. But he's having a hard time keeping track of which day is which. So yes, I hope this video is a happy distraction in your day. I hope you use this as an opportunity to chat with one another. I have some fun questions lined up for today. Today's quilt block is not going to take that long to make. And I'm going to tell you, even though we're cutting some pieces at the 7 8 mark, this block, I would say on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the hardest, is maybe a 3. I'm trying to be really unbiased about the difficulty level. Might be a three or a four, but I'm going to show you how to make it. That's what we're doing today. Robin, your days are all blending together too. <laughs> I've been someone who lives by a planner for the last four or five years. And so I'm in my planner every day. Sally, it's been hard for your husband too. I think it's hard for so many people who aren't doing their normal routine, right? I work from home, so <laughs> it's, it's, this, is kind, this is kind of my normal, except the series, this isn't what I usually do, but yes. So I did something fun with this block. I took this block and instead of repeating it over and over again, because I said yesterday, that just kind of looked like a pine tree forest, right? I put it together as a row by row quilt with the house block. The house block is one that we've done. I forget what number that block was, but you can scroll through the videos in this series and find it if you didn't make it yet. So I did a row of a lone pine tree blocks and a row of houses, pine tree blocks, row of houses. I think that's pretty cute, right? It looks kind of like a neighborhood. Mm. Hi, Miss Diane. Uh, thank you so much for moderating as well. I appreciate both of you. Thank you so much for keeping up with the comments and moderating the chat. Thank you so much. That means that I can somewhat focus on what I'm doing and I don't have to, I don't have to worry. Our chat is in good hands. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that is really cute, right? Looks like a little neighborhood. <laughs> I could see making that as a quilt. I think it's adorable. Make sure you stay till the end if you're here, but if you have to leave, or maybe you're watching this on the replay, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the pieces you need to gather for tomorrow if you're sewing with me live. Hello, everybody. It's so great. Thank you so much for spending part of your Thursday with me. Guess what? I'm about ready to get started. Yes, I am. Because this block is not going to take that long. 
not compared to some of our blocks that we've done the last few days. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start with the questions for today. And the first five questions are a this or that kind of question. Would you prefer this or that? Okay. And I'm going to switch over to my work table as we get started. Look what I did. I covered my rotating mat with some gray flannel fabric because I think my pieces will show up better on that, right? I think they do. So here are all of my pieces. The very first thing we're going to do today, let's see, what is the first thing we're going to do today? We're going to be cutting this blue 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths block. We're going to be cutting that one time on the diagonal. Then we're going to bring over this one green 7 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter block. We're going to cut it this way and we're going to cut it that way. That's what we're doing first today. <clears throat> so this or that, would you rather... Do your shopping online or shopping in a store? Shopping online or shopping in a store? Which one would you rather do? Here lately, we're all shopping online, right? <laughs> but if you had your choice freely and we weren't um, social distancing, would you rather be in the store shopping or would you rather just do it online? So let's go ahead. We've got one blue fabric piece, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. We're going to line up corner to corner on a line on your mat. We're going to cut it one time. That's going to give us the two blue pieces of the sky. Online shopping or shopping in a store. So now we have our two blue sky pieces. I'm going to set those aside. And then we're going to bring over our green fabric that is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Here's the next one. In a car, would you rather be the passenger or the driver? The passenger or the driver. The green fabric we're cutting two times, so we're going to make the first cut from corner to corner. And then we're going to flip this around and we're going to cut it the opposite direction from corner to corner. And I find it just as easy to line up this line here to a horizontal line on my mat. And the little tip of the triangle, I line up on one of these vertical lines, right? I'm just gonna line it just like that. And then bring in the next one, line it up straight, and the corner, the tip of the triangle goes on one of the lines as well. <laughs> Beverly says, passenger telling the driver how to drive. <laughs> yes, that's the passenger's job, right? All right, we're going to cut these one more time. Now, with the green fabric, we made four little triangles, but guess what? We only need one of them, right? So we're going to save these other treetops for either three other blocks. You've got the hard work done, right? You have treetops already cut. Or you can put them in your stash as part of a half square triangle. You can do all kinds of stuff with these extra ones, but you're going to have three extra ones. We only need one. And that is all the cutting that we have to do. Whoops, I just threw my little blue triangles away to the side. We need those, Lisa. That is all the cutting that we need to do. Do you like using a tablet or a computer? 
tablet or a computer. I'm going to go ahead and lay this block out for everybody. Yeah, I think you can see it much better with this little gray background, right? So we're going to lay out the top portion of this block just like this. This actually makes a little flying geese unit, right? And then at the bottom half of the block, you've got the trunk in the middle. The trunk is two inches by three and a half. And then you've got two blue pieces and those go on either side of the trunk, just like that. And these measure two and three quarters by three and a half. So that is the layout for our block today. See, simple cutting. We're not cutting lots and lots and lots and not that many pieces. Here's the fourth one, amusement park or day at the beach. Would you rather have a day at the beach or go to an amusement park? We live right across the street from Bush Gardens. We could almost walk there. <laughs> Would you rather spend the day at an amusement park or a day at the beach? If you're sewing with me live, you'll want to go ahead and set up your sewing machine with a quarter inch seam allowance and turn on your iron and get that warming up. I think myself, I'd rather spend the day at the amusement park. I like the beach. I just don't like the sand. Sand in your car. But I love the sounds of the beach, right? I can see many of you like the beach over the amusement park. I like the food at the amusement park. The funnel cakes and ice cream cones and snow cones. <laughs> right, Beverly? She wants to eat while she's at the amusement park. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we live right across the street from Bush Gardens. So the last one, before we start sewing, the last this or that question is uh, a much debated topic. Much debated. With your toilet paper. Does it go over or does it go under? Over or under? I'll look forward to reading all of your comments tonight in the live chat. <laughs> Toilet paper, should it go over or should it go under? Here in my bathroom, it should just be lucky that it gets put on the little spinny rolly thing mounted to the wall <laughs> instead of sitting on top of it. <laughs> That's just the truth, y'all. That is the truth. So we're going to go ahead and start sewing this block together. We're going to start with this flying geese unit, okay? We're going to take this blue triangle. We're going to flip it right onto the bigger green one. When you flip it, you want to line up the raw edge at the bottom of your tree, okay? So your blue triangle raw edge should rest right on the edge of the green tree. You're going to have a little uh, flippy extra part at the top of your tree. If it's helpful, go ahead and mark that little seam right there. If that helps you remember what side to sew. I'm going to go ahead and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Over or under? I don't think I have a preference one way. I'm just happy if it gets put on the little spinny thing. <laughs> Alright, so there is our first triangle. Time to wake up, Iron. Get ready. 
I'm going to go ahead and trim my little dog ears, okay? So if we flip this blue triangle over, what sticks out is what I'm going to trim away. You can leave that on there if you like. And then I'm going to press this towards the smaller blue triangle. And that gives us the first half of our flying geese unit up at the top. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the other side as well. So we're going to flip the other blue triangle right on top of the green. And we're going to line up that raw edge at the bottom. Just like that. And if you want to, go ahead and mark that little seam right there. That's the one that we're sewing. And we're sewing that with a quarter inch seam allowance as well. You're going to have a little extra flippity flip thing up at the top. <laughs> Again. I'm going to trim off this little part right there that hangs over and this dog ear right there. And I'm going to press this one again over to the blue sky area. And that makes a little flying geese unit, which consists of the top of our tree and the sky area. So half of our block is done. Nadine, that's a good question. Here in Virginia, it is 1236 p.m. 1236 where I am. We are Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to give everybody, because I know several of y'all are sewing with me live, I'm going to give it just a minute so that if you are sewing, you can catch up. <clears throat> wow, so great to see everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, I am earlier today. This is about the normal time that I've been coming on live here on YouTube. The last two days, Harlan had work meetings set for 1.30. And so I didn't want to rush the blocks to get done before he needed to use all of the internet. So we've been later the last two days. But this is about our normal time that we have been coming on. Mm. Well, it looks like predominantly over winds for the toilet paper over or under. <laughs> Just scanning through quickly, not reading every single one. It looks like over was dominating that one. Tamara, you should be working. You've been working so hard, Miss Tamara. I hope you just take a little bit of a break. Do I miss hearing the airplanes at my old house? Sometimes I do. I didn't mind the airplane noise. We lived near um, Langley Air Force Base. That to me was the sound of freedom, y'all. And you could go out and watch them. Sometimes they would, it would look like they were just over top of our house. And from Langley, they do lots of practice flights. So we would watch them all the time. 
The only time that it was a little hard to deal with is when you're filming a video and you don't want the airplane noise in the background of the video. That was the only time that it was a little annoying, but this house is much more quiet. <laughs> Wanda says, in your opinion, would the leaf pattern be a good fall tree pattern? I've done hidden my leaf block, Miss Wanda. I've done hidden it. Uh, I'd have to really take a look at it, Miss Wanda. I think it would have a shorter trunk, right? Janet, you just got here. All right, we're gonna recap the questions before we get back to sewing. We did five this or that's, okay? So it, uh, do you prefer online shopping or shopping in a store? Would you rather be a passenger in a car or the driver? Would you rather use a tablet or a computer? I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. <laughs> Would you rather visit an amusement park or have a day at the beach? And with your toilet paper, when you put a new roll on, does it go over or under? That's the first. There were five of them, but they're pretty quick like one answer questions. Tamara, you're expecting snow tonight. My goodness. Mary says, depends on who's driving. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. All right. I'm hoping that if you're sewing with me live, you've had a chance to catch up. We've done the first half of the block. This block's going to go together really quick. That's why on a scale of 1 to 10, I say it's about a three and I really give it a three because we're cutting a, some, uh, you know, seven eighth measurements and we're piecing together this flying geese unit. But you saw it goes together pretty easy, right? So I'll give it about a three. Now we're ready to piece together the bottom half of this block. I'm going to do chain piecing y'all, which means I'm going to flip the brown over to one side. I will sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance and then while I'm still at the machine I'm going to bring over this block. Let's go ahead and ask uh, a new question. What type of job do you have and uh, what is the best or worst part of it? What type of job do you have? And what is the best or worst part of your job? I'm going to go ahead and bring this over and sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. You can throw some pins in there if you want to hold it all in place. I'm just going to use my fingers. And then I'm just going to flip over the brown trunk of our tree and finger press that right down just like that. And we're bringing over this other blue piece. Vicki, being a housewife and cutting the grass, that's a lot of work, girlfriend. Taking care of a house, I'm going to tell you, that is a lot of work. Being a stay-at-home mom. That is probably one of the most hardest jobs there is, right? I'm going to bring in this other blue piece. We'll flip it and sew it. I do not enjoy cutting grass. I am so thankful that Harlan 
enjoys cutting the yard. <laughs> I don't enjoy it at all. <laughs> So now we have these three sections sewn together. Just making sure I haven't missed any questions. We have these three sections sewn together and I'm gonna press this. Now many of y'all press your seams open and that's absolutely fine. I press mine to the side and one thing you'll notice if you're going to flip it over and press your seams to the side that these two seams just sort of naturally want to gravitate towards that middle and that's exactly how I'm going to press them. I'll press that one and then I'll press that one and they'll both go towards the trunk of the tree. So here is the bottom half of our block. See how fast that's coming together? <laughs> it's coming together pretty quickly, right? We only have one more seam to do for this block. I look forward to going through and reading all of the answers to your questions. We have one more question, but I'm going to save it until after we get this, um, this one seam done to finish up this block. We're flipping this over and we're sewing that middle seam from edge to edge with a quarter inch seam allowance right there. And I'm going to give this a press and we'll do our great big reveal. This is a cute little block. I could see where you could get lots of these done in one sewing session. If you go ahead and pre-cut all of your pieces out, then just start doing some chain stitching, you'd knock out quite a few little lone pine tree blocks pretty quickly. Here's our finished block. This block should, at this point, measure six and a half by six and a half inches. Isn't that cute? I think that's adorable. I love going at night and reading all of the answers to these questions that we've been asking. It's one of the highlights of my day. One of the highlights of my day. Adorable, cute little block. Thank you, Miss Chantel. Thank you. So, I know I'm going to start seeing some lone pine tree blocks over on Creative Crew Group. 
upside down spinning top. Oh, okay, I get it, yes. It could be a little spinning top, right? <laughs> it also could be an arrow like kitchen that way. <laughs> Bathroom that way. It could be an arrow too. Yes, it could be many different things. <laughs> yeah, it's versatile for lots of different things. So one of the things that I like to do, now that we've finished up this block really fast today, right? This was a fast one. I'm gonna ask the last question of the day and then I'm gonna pull up the block for tomorrow. And I like to leave that on the screen for several minutes so that you can either take a screenshot or you can grab a notepad and a pen and write down the measurements for tomorrow. The last question of the day. What is the most bizarre food that you have ever eaten? That's a good idea, Stitch Pennies. That's a good idea. <laughs> that would be one more thing for me to remember to do, though. <laughs> I think I'm at my limit at thing my to-do list for the day. But that is a good that is a good suggestion. I have so much fun reading through everything. Harlan probably thinks I'm crazy because sometimes I just start laughing. He's like, "What's so funny? <laughs> what is the most bizarre food that you have ever eaten?" <clears throat> I'm gonna pull up the block pieces for tomorrow. Tomorrow, and I meant to take that off the screen. Tomorrow's block is the twenty fifth. Quilt block, we're making the Red Cross variation. Tomorrow's block, we're going bigger. It's gonna be a 12 inch quilt block tomorrow. And here are the pieces that you need to gather for the block if you wanna sew with me live tomorrow. I'm gonna to leave that up on the screen for a few minutes. Nadine, uh, the question was, what is the most bizarre food that you have ever eaten? I used to work with a guy, actually I worked with a bunch of guys. I worked in a warehouse for a really long time and I was the only female in the warehouse. They were like all my older brothers, right? And uh, But they were older, older than I was. One of them, he loved eating mountain oysters. Do you know what that is? He loved them. Oh, he would come in and talk about eating the mountain oysters his wife made. He loved them more than any other food on the planet. But inevitably, every time she made them for him, he got the gout. And he suffered for about a week afterwards. And he would still eat them, even though he knew what was going to happen. He'd still eat them. Mountain oysters. Prairie oysters. <laughs> what is the gout? I don't know exactly what happens, Chantel, but he would get the gout in his feet, which was very, very, very painful. And it lasted for him for about a week. So, he'd still eat them though. He'd still eat them and then he'd suffer. Oh, Carolyn likes them. Thank you, Mimsy. You get the crystals that form in the joint. I knew it was something like that because he told me a long, long time ago. 
And you can get it all over. He got it in his feet every time he ate those. <laughs> Didn't stop him. Oh, and he would talk about it the next day for hours, all day long. He would talk about it. He loved them that much. He did. It was a rare treat for him because she knew what would happen. She didn't make them that often, but he would bug her to make them. And when she did, he got it for a week. <clears throat> so yeah, today has a, been a much shorter video. We made the little pine, lone pine tree block. Up on the screen is the pieces for tomorrow. If you've just jumped in, this is what we made today. I could see making several of these in one sewing session, right? That's how quick it went to come. It came together. I like the little pine tree. It's going to look adorable. Right now I have all of my blocks that we've made off to the side. <laughs> in the next day or two, I'll be able to use the design wall for my blocks again. I've tried frog legs. I love seafood. I love seafood. Well, we live near the ocean. I love some seafood. I'm not a great big fan of frog legs, but I've tried them before. That makes a lot of sense, Sally, because the feet are the furthest part away. That makes a lot of sense. Ella, the question was, uh, what is the most bizarre food that you have ever eaten? Ooh, shrimp scampi. That sounds delicious. That sounds delicious. Oh, you see the picket fence? Yeah, I, t I accidentally, I noticed that this morning that I had turned it, <laughs> I had turned it sideways. It does kind of look neat, right? It does look neat like that. So, I was trying to drag out this video so we could sit and chat for a little bit. This block was so fast today. So, I'll ask one more question before we close today. Out of, if you've been following this series, which one of the blocks has been your most favorite so far, including the Lone Pine Tree? Which one has been your most favorite so far? I know, Sally with the food. <laughs> Welcome to Elisa Capen Live video. We're going to talk about food. <laughs> ah, the card trick, the bubble, double bow tie, churn dash, churn dasher, the beaming star, churn dasher. Yes, I like the beaming star. I think that's really pretty. The churn dash block is probably still one in my top five. The card trick was a lot of fun. Bear tracks, mosaic star. Ooh, the farmer's darter. Hope of Hartford. Yeah, this is your second day. So you'll have to go back through all the videos. They're all there together and they're grouped in a playlist. So you could just go from one to the next or if you scroll through, you'll see an example of each one of the blocks. 
before you even open up the video. So you could pick and choose which one you want to make. Ah, you love them all. Yeah, I love each and every one of them. There's been a few that weren't my absolute most favorite ones to make. Like the churn dasher. <laughs> and I think that's just because during the live, I messed it up. <laughs> and it was stressful. So it's tainted my opinion on that block. Still a very pretty block. Which one is the Beaming Star? Let's see. Beaming Star, Beaming Star. I think the Beaming Star is the one you see up on the wall right here, but I have to double check. I can't say for certain. Yes, that one right there, Beaming Star. Oh, eep, right there. <laughs> Everything is backwards that I see. Ooh, Pamela, you're working on an underground underground railroad quilt. That sounds so interesting. You think tomorrow's block will be nice? Yeah. So let me pull up on the screen. Y'all saw a flash of it when we switched over. If you took this block that we're doing tomorrow, which is a variation of the red cross block, and you repeat it several times, this is what it would look like. That's pretty nice, right? Now I'm just giving an example of like a red, white, and blue, but you could substitute your colors for any colorway that you wanna use. I think that's very pretty. Wanda, I'm so glad I'm pulling you out of your comfort zone. Guess what? Tomorrow's block has absolutely no half square triangles. For those of you who were here yesterday and, and asked for a beginner's type of block, tomorrow's block has no half square triangles. And it has no weird measurements like the seven eighths and the quarter or three quarters, right? Tomorrow's block, I'm not going to say it's a beginner block, but it's like a two or a three if you can sew a straight seam, okay? If you've never touched a sewing machine, of course, that's going to be different, right? But uh, no half square triangles tomorrow. You're going to miss tomorrow. Can you list the questions in the description? <laughs> I don't know what questions I'm going to ask tomorrow, Miss Mimsy. You want tomorrow's questions or today's? Just scanning through, make sure I haven't missed any questions. I think we're good. Nadine has a great question. What are y'all going to do with the rest of your day? Uh, this morning, I started sewing together chunks of my t-shirt quilt. So all the blocks with the same size seams are sewn together in chunks. And now... I'm going to start assembling the chunks together to make bigger chunks. So that's what I'm doing with the rest of my day. <laughs> Tomorrow's questions. I don't know. I don't have no idea what those are going to be yet, Miss Mimsy. I think about them right before we go live. <laughs> Hazel. Thank you so much, Miss Hazel. Thank you. Kes, if you want to join the Creative Crew group, I think that's the group you're asking about. Uh, 
go to Lisa Cape and Quilts on Facebook. And then you'll see a little blue bar that says join group. That's the creative crew group. And there's a couple of questions you need to ask as a security measure. You answer those two questions and then you're part of the group. There's also a link. If you open up the description box of this video right now, you'll find a link that brings you straight over to the creative crew group. All right, everybody. I've had fun. I feel like today's video has been so super duper short. That's because today's block was super duper easy, right? The Lone Pine Tree. Tomorrow we're doing the Red Cross variation, a bigger block. There's going to be more pieces, but it's not a hard block. And I'm going to walk you through it step by step. If you want to sew with me live and you've missed these pieces, come back on the replay and pause the screen. You can write them down or take a screenshot. Y'all, I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Can't wait to see you then. And I hope you have a blessed and happy and relaxing day. I hope you take some time for yourself. And uh, yes, take care of yourself. Okay? I love you and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.